Alright, what's up guys? So welcome to the American Campfire Revival. Um, tonight is night 91. And we are going to be talking about revival. No, um, but we are going to be talking about revival except for tonight. We're taking it on a whole nother level. So, I want to encourage you. Actually, I'm going to pray for you. Let's go ahead and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us, Lord, just to gather together. And I pray that this will be a time to where we come together, Lord, and worship you with a willing heart. Lord, to where we would seek you. Lord, I pray that you would please speak through me. And allow this not to be for my glory, but for yours. And in your holy name, amen. All right, so you're probably wondering why I look very dashing this evening. No, um, I mean, I do look okay, but uh, I was at a friend's graduation party. And you know the cool thing about graduation parties is it's the result of completing a goal that has been set. What is the goal of revival? What is revival? We've kind of talked about it a little bit briefly, but me and my sister were talking after the graduation party for my friend. Um, put bluntly, what is revival? What is the revival that is being spoken of every single night? The revival we crave. What is that revival? And I think the best place to start is in the beginning. In the beginning. This is Genesis 1-1. Which says this. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth without form and void. And the earth was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the waters. Then the Lord said, Let there be light. And there was light. See, way back in Genesis, in the very beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And on the earth, He created us. You know why? Because he wanted to have a relationship with us. And he walked with us literally, physically in the garden. And we walked with him. We knew only good as a result of walking with him. But then we sinned. And because we sinned, that relationship with God was broken. That relationship with God was broken, and we were plunged into darkness. And the only way that we, the only way that we can know right from wrong, that we can have the fruits of the Spirit, is by knowing God and having a relationship with Him and walking with Him. He is the only way that we can know life, know eternal life. He is the only way that we can know purpose. That relationship with God is what we were created to have. It's what each of us craves and desires if we do not already have it. In the darkness, I you literally can't see what's right and what's left. Just like in the darkness, you can't see what's right from what's wrong. But with light, you can see clearly what's right and what's wrong. The song played at the beginning was called City 
on its knees. city on its knees. Why? Why? Why would a city need to be on its knees? If you go with me to Jonah, Go to Jonah chapter 3. This is what it says. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh. This is the second time. According to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began the journey to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed the fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe and covered himself with sackcloth and ashes. Nineveh became a city on its knees. And as a result, God spared them. Revival. Revival must happen individually before it can happen nationally. Before a country can be abiding in God as a result, or before God can abide in a country, the country first has to be abiding in God. Individually, on an individual level, we must be abiding in God, walking with God before He can abide within us. Revival to live again. And as a result, of revival we have the opportunity to know God again on that same relationship we had in the garden because of the sacrifice of Jesus overcoming the grave because of Jesus sacrifice we can now know God because we sin, we have flaws. And yes, while God can show through our flaws, we still are flawed. And we needed a sacrifice to repair what we had broken. And Jesus was that sacrifice. And as a result of us choosing to rely on Him, it revived that relationship with God. It brought life once again. It was a revival. We, as an individual, need to be reliant on God. We need to be a city on our knees before we can be a city on a hill. Now you may be wondering, what, what, what is a city on a hill? I have to do that with this. Well, if you go to Matthew 5, 
verse 14 it says you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lamp stand and it gives light to all who are in the house let your light shine so men let your light shine so before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven and that actually reminds me a little bit of the American Covenant. If you go, I don't know if you have a copy on you, but I have a copy on me, of, of, of course. Um, but if you go to chapter, uh, my bad, not chapter, page 117. There's a little passage, a little excerpt called A City on a Hill. While at the sea, on board the flagship, the Arabella, the thoughtful, self-sacrificing Christian leader, John Winthrop, wrote an important paper known as a model of Christian charity, which he shared with his fellow Puritans. It is an eloquent statement of their motives and goals for the new colony. First of all, Winthrop wished them to remember who they were. We are a company, a community, of professing ourselves fellow members of Christ, knit together by this bond of love, he tells them. And what, what was to be their purpose? Well, he also writes that they work, that they had work and hand, and that was to seek a place to live together under a due form of government, both civil and ecclesiastical. But theirs was not to be a mere legal agreement, as in the Mayflower Compact, their relationship to God and to each other is described in covenantal terms. Thus stands out this cause between God and us. We are entered into a covenant with him for this work. Now if the Lord shall please to bear with us and bring us in peace to the place we desire, then hath he verified this covenant and sealed our commission. With a clear vision of their place in history, Winthrop prayed that God shall make us a praise and glory that men shall say of succeeding plantations, the Lord make it like that of New England. For we must consider, we shall be a city upon a hill. The eyes of the people are upon us. So if we shall deal falsely with our God in this work, we have undertaken and so caused him to withdraw his present help from us. We shall be made a story and a byword, a laughing stock through the world. This stands as a reminder to the 20th century American Christians of our duty. Are not the eyes of the world as well as the eyes of God focused upon America today, critically evaluating how we are living out the principles of our founding covenants? See, before we can be a city on a hill, in order to be a city on a hill, we must first be a city on our knees, a people on our knees, individually. Revival has to happen within our own hearts, within our own families, within our own schools, our churches, our communities, our politicians, our governments. It has to happen individually before it can happen nationally. And once it happens individually, it will naturally happen nationally. A nation that looks to God and relies on God. A nation that abides in God is a nation that God abides in it. And just as John Winthrop was talking about, God gave us the opportunity to be that city on a hill. But that was not by our own reliance, by reliance on ourselves, but rather a reliance on him. And I've got this really cool, I guess you could say graphic. I don't know if you're able to see this. But this is the rock of the word, which is success. In this, with the shifting sands of us. See how unsteady and unstable this is? And how firm this one is? See... When we look to God as our foundation, when we rely on 
him. He shows us what to do. He gives us light in the darkness. He shows us right from wrong. He helps us to know what we need to do. And the fruits of the Spirit flow out of us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. They will flow out of us individually and as a nation. Don't you want to see a nation that is loving, that has all of the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is what our nation is saying that it wants. But they are not abiding in the tree that allows them to bear that fruit. Rather, they are abiding in the rotten, the dead plant, the tree, whatever you want to picture it as. They are wishing to bear fruit from a plant that does not even grow that type of fruit. But when we abide in God, when He is our foundation, when we rely on Him, it repairs that relationship once again so that way we may have life and that we can bear that fruit and know right from wrong. That way we can have purpose. We can come together as a community. As um, John Winthrop put it, we are a community, a company, professing ourselves fellow members of Christ, knit together by this bond of love. To come together as a result of relying on God. And as a result of relying on God, it allows us to continue to have that relationship with Him once again that we had in the garden, that we can have because of Jesus' sacrifice to overcome death, defeat the grave, so that way we may know God. And finally, in order to be a city on the hill. In order to be a city on a stable foundation, we must first be a city on our knees, relying on God. That is what revival is. Revival is relying on God. Relying on God and having a relationship with Him. So that way, you may have life and have it abundantly. So that way you may know what to do. He can guide you. He can give you purpose. And the fruits of the Spirit may flow out of you. And a light can shine out of you just as it does on a city on a hill. Because once you choose to abide in Him, He abides in you. And the light flows forth from you in the darkness of this world. And that is what America was founded on that principle that if we rely on God if we rely on God if we have that relationship with God if we live and walk with God he will live and walk with us we just simply must be willing to rely on him to be a city on our knees so I want to question you individually tonight. Are you relying on God? Or are you relying on yourself? Are you relying on the government, on politicians? Or are you relying on God? The only one who can bring a true, stable foundation. Who can bring light. Oh, light. And the darkness. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us just to come together. And I pray that this will be a time of worship to you, to where we would continue to rely on you, Lord, and our nation would rely on you, our government, our politicians, our schools, even those watching, Lord, especially those watching that everyone would once again turn towards you and rely on you and humble themselves before you, knowing that you are the only one who can provide a true, stable foundation, that you are the only one 
that can provide true life, Lord. Help us to know how to truly live. And help us to have eternal life. Not just after we die, Lord, but the moment we choose to rely on you in the present right now. Lord, I want to thank you for this opportunity and I pray that we would rely on you. I, I want to thank you for the opportunity for allowing us to rely on you and for you sending your son, Lord, to defeat death so that way we can rely on you and live and walk with you and that you can be with us in the midst of our trials Lord and in your holy name Amen Alright guys thank you so much for joining me for the American Campfire Revival Night 91 I want to encourage you to go down there and hit that like and subscribe button in order to stay tuned uh, if you want to, comment below. If you would like to start a conversation, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Adios.